Okay guys, I know we're all really excited about the European season staying off soon, but before then, we've got a top of the table clash against HK. We know these guys are tough. The score line probably flattered us a few games ago in that League Cup final. Okay, so we really need to focus, get in a good position in the League prior to Champions League qualifying. We're not far away from it now. Okay boys, one last push before we get into Europe. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 119 of Husevik Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode we are going to start off with a little bit of a transfer update followed by a top of the table clash against HK and off the back of that we'll go for a little bit further to Champions League registration and by then we should have our squad locked in for this upcoming European season and can do our squad review leading into that. So if you are looking forward to today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. At some stage during today's episode as well, you might find out exactly who we are going to be playing in that second qualifying round for the Champions League as that time might be completed during the course of today's episode but top of the table clash coming up today that is because domestically we continue to remain unbeaten off the back of our game against Nuts KR yesterday as well as our end of European season roundup if you missed that episode I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner but having a quick look at how we have been getting on off the back of that game and those ones that we did play not too long off the back of that against Nuts and that prior Mocha Bickering game we have picked up three wins since then and most of them have been quite comfortable, two very comfortable wins at home against Breda Blick in the league and then a lower division team in the Molka Bikarin and that was surrounded by a 2-0 win away from home there against Valorakovic with goals to Larson and Rakasan with our first team playing that game for us. So we are in a very good position going into a top of the table clash today against HK. A win here would put us in a really nice spot nearly halfway through the league season prior to getting stuck in two Champions League qualifiers in tomorrow's episode but before we do get into the game in today's episode against HK we do have a little bit of a transfer update before we get into the squad look through later on in this episode we have added one new player to the mix here at Volsinger and we've also got a few players who are currently under bid as well and should be leaving the club during the course of today's episode and the player who has joined us was one of those ones that we did have here on trial during yesterday's episode a player who can really put some pressure on Nicholas Zimmerman as our starting right winger hopefully but can also play in the midfield as well so a very good versatile option for us here on a free transfer from Manchester City since the new European season has ticked over and that is Blagovest Ogneyov he looks like a decent prospect there free star current ability three and a half star potential out of Bulgaria has had a solid career so far at Manchester City you can see there he's valued between 2 million and 4.3 million pounds so to get him on a free transfer is quite a good bit of business, has some decent attributes there and hopefully he can prove useful for us in this upcoming European season. As I said most recently he's been at Manchester City, he hasn't actually been staying a lot of games for those guys after leaving Ludogorets for 4.4 million back in 2026-27 but he did perform quite well back in Bulgaria to start off his career. A couple of games for Manchester City, he did pick up a goal in his first season there but hasn't really seen much game time over the last few seasons and hopefully we can revive this guy's career here at Volsunga, but a good versatile option in the squad for us here in Blagovest Ogniov. So that is the one new addition that we have made off the back of yesterday's episode. In terms of outs, there's a few fees here that are a little bit different to what we did mention in yesterday's episode. Kevin Malsi Martins actually left us £41,500, not £21,000. So that was a much better transfer than I did make it sound in yesterday's episode. And we've also sold a few players who are more fringe players here at Volsinger as well over the last few episodes. Probably most notable is Vlade Saric. He has gone on a permanent transfer to HK after being on loan there last season for £350,000. Here's the midfielder who we did bring in here a few seasons ago. His potential just wasn't quite as high as it was when we first got hold of him. So he can go to HK and hopefully help those guys make the group stages 
of the Conference League for this upcoming European season. That would be very good. I think HK could do a great job in the group stages of the Conference League should they get through their free rounds of prior qualifying. And then a few other players who weren't really featured too much over the past few seasons have also left us. Soren Thomason has gone back to Denmark to OB for £500,000 a player. We got on a free transfer. One of our homegrown players, Gisli Gunnar Boisson, he has gone to Nuts KR for £500 as he doesn't have a lower potential at all. And we have also sold Lasse Jorgensen, another one of these players we picked up on a free transfer a few seasons ago, but he has gone domestically as well to half Nafshador, albeit for not much money there, and £5,500. So those are some transfers that we have been dealing with over the past few episodes. It does mean at the moment that we have spent £20.5 million in this past transfer window but have let go of £10.75 million worth of players as well. And there could be some more outgoings during today's episode as well. There are bids in for both Nathaniel Satole and Benjamin Rubio around about the £1.5 million mark with 40% of the next sale clause included in those deals as well. So those could be two players who we are going to let go of potentially during today's episode. Nathaniel Satole underbid from AC Milan. And Benjamin Rubio, I believe, is underbid. If we just go and have a look at him once we make our way down to him, he is underbid at the moment from, if we go and have a look, from Armenia Bielefeld over in Germany. So those are transfers that could be going through during the course of today's episode of Players that we do want to get rid of. We nearly did sell Nicholas Zimmerman to Bologna for £4 million with the addition of Ogniov from Manchester City, but he turned down that contract here after a deal from Juventus and to be fair to him his form of late has been really good as well so maybe we will look to keep Nicholas Zimmerman but if a big bid does come in for him during today's episode as well that could be a player we do let go of because technically in terms of the attributes Ogniov does look like a better player in that inverted winger role than Zimmerman is so that's what's happening transfer wise going into the start of today's episode we are about to play HK in a top of the table clash this is the team that we are going with for this one the same team that we did identify as being our best 11 during yesterday's episode just one change on the bench Ogniov does come on there for Chaka trial racing as he is not a foreigner that allows us to make some substitutions a little bit more freely in terms of domestic games anyway and we'll get some match fitness under his belt seeing as he has played very little for Manchester City over the past few years so we'll try and give him some minutes at some point off the bench today but otherwise we are at full strength for this one we'll come back shortly get through this top of the table clash against HK prior to getting stuck into our look through of the squad ahead of this upcoming European season and with five minutes gone we do have the first highlight of this top of the table clash exactly the same uniforms as a few episodes ago in the league cup final and Nicholas Zimmerman continues his great start to this season he is almost going at a goal a game, and that is another Kenny Boreal with a nice ball there after delivering this throw and hits Larson off that. It's a one, two, goes back to Basaroge. Nice ball over there for Boreal and a good run there from Nicholas Zimmerman. It's a great start here against the team full of former Volsunga players. We're one nil up at the six minute mark. And we do have to wait all the way up to the 35 minute mark for our next highlight. So far, this game playing out quite similarly to that League Cup final against these guys which we did play a few episodes ago. Not many shots from either team. HK doing a good job so far of containing us, apart from that early goal we did get there through Nicholas Zimmerman and Tony Perez there with a clearance. One of our former players here in this HK squad. I think I've got about seven of our former players in amongst this squad and substitutes bench for this game. There's a chance. Frederick Larson, tight angle. Matthias Aguile misses an absolute sitter on the rebound. We should really be 2-0 up but it's still 1-0 in our favour, five minutes shy of half time, And that is half time in this one. Not the most eventful first half in terms of highlights. We certainly got a few more shots off late in that first half than in the first part of it, but we did grab an early goal there through Nicholas Zimmerman, and we are 1-0 up, albeit probably should be up 2-0. A great chance there for the Peruvian and Matthias Aguirre. Somehow missed the target there. Off the rebound, but if we can keep playing like this, hopefully we'll build on this lead throughout the second half. 1-0 ahead in this top of the table clash. And up to the 55-minute mark for our first highlight here of the second half. A good slide tackle potentially there from Zimmerman. It does just do enough there to disrupt HK's possession. 
and we do get the ball back here and look to play out from the back to start off the second half. There was a highlight earlier, but a couple of pretty average chances for us. I didn't see much point in including those chances from quite narrow angles where we really weren't ever going to score, and we missed the target with those shots anyway, so wasn't much point showing that highlight around the 50-minute mark, but this one is a little bit longer, and we do get the ball out there to Kaylin Rakasan, tries to put a ball into the mixer. HK do get position back there. Alpha Semedo, of course, who got a red card in that League Cup final a few episodes ago, clears that, but only as far as Thiago Polo gets that out to Lev Van Tam. Nicholas Zimmerman, the goal scorer, puts it in for Aguirre. It's a good save there, and another one from the HK goalkeeper. Some good chances there for us at the 55-minute mark, but it does remain 1-0 Volsinger with just over a half hour left, and right off the back of those couple of good chances for us, it is a free kick here to HK right around the halfway line. They get that to one of their players on a yellow card. He puts a nice ball in there for the leading goal scorer in the division so far in Burnson, and HK make the most of their chance after we have blown quite a few good ones, and they level the scores here at the HK Stadium. Maybe Kenny Boreal there could have got possession back. Looked a little bit slow trying to get out to that ball. Nice ball put into the mixer there, and Burnson tucks it away. One all at the R mark. And up to the 65-minute mark now, we are going to make our first few substitutions. A few players not quite performing as well as maybe they could. We will bring Ian Carlo on for Lee Van Tam and Fabio Maliano on for Matthias Aguirre as we are still locked up at one all here with 25 minutes left. And a few minutes off the back of those substitutions, HK try and get on the attack again there, a long ball forward for Burnson, but thankfully Thiago Polo does get on the end of there and we try and do something here on the counter-attack through Fabio Maliano back there for Frederick Larson. Great chance, just puts it wide. Still one all inside the last 20 minutes. And with just over 10 minutes left in this one, we are going to make our last substitution. It is Lasana Dumbia, who is down here to a red heart. Good bench option in the midfield for us these days. And Karel Giroud, he will come on for him for these last 12 minutes as we go in search of a winning goal. And we are inside the last 10 minutes. It is a corner here to HK as we're starting to pick up a few yellow cards late in this one in defence. Hopefully, that doesn't prove too costly. Thankfully, Quirrell Lubick does come out to claim that ball from that corner. A nice ball over the top here for Zimmerman in behind the defence. What can he do? That's poor from Anthony Perez already on a yellow card. One of the former Volsinger players there. He will get his second yellow card. That could be a big moment in this game. Is that an inside job from us there? We will see because Kalen Rakasan Sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. That is a big moment. And we go 2-1 up here with only six minutes left. That was a very soft penalty given away, especially on a yellow card. He goes off there, does Perez. Rakasan tucks away the penalty. And we are ahead late in this one. And we do have a highlight immediately from the restart off the back of that penalty. It is HK in position. Interesting to see they have brought on Mikel Bedrisa. He put some poor play there at the back as they do try and get on here. With their 10 minute, we have a chance here potentially on the counter attack, albeit HK do deal with things, but we're trying to really put the pressure on now against these 10 men. Larson from a tight angle, it's saved, and this time the deflection gets put away. Fabio Maliano is not missing those. He has been lethal in front of goal for us so far this season, and that late red card from that last penalty could prove very, very decisive here in this top of the table clash. We go 3-1 up in the space of only a few minutes there, thanks to Fabio Maliano. And inside the last minute of injury time in this one, we do have a late throw but things have really changed in this game off the back of that red card, given the second yellow card to Anthony Perez off the back of that penalty, which was awarded off the run there of Nicholas Zimmerman. And since then, it has been all Volsinger with the one-man advantage, and we might be able to put a cherry on top here. Larson puts one into the mixer, and Kalen Rakasan will pick up a double in HK have completely fallen apart late here with 10 men. They were doing quite well to get that scoreline back to all square, but that second yellow card, as I said, has proven a big game changer for us to one of our former players in Anthony Perez. And from there, we have grabbed a late treble and looks like we'll be winning this top of the table clash by a scoreline of four goals through one, thanks to a late double there to Kaelin Rakasan and also Fabio Maliano taking away a chance there. Very similar to the one that Matthias Aguirre did have in the first half to put us 2-0 up. That's a good win. That means we'll go eight points clear 
at the top of the table. And hopefully that will be the margin that we do take into the start of European qualifying. And we'll come back shortly and do our squad look through prior to the start of the European qualifying cycle in tomorrow's episode. And we are back about to do a run through of our squad for the upcoming European season. We have also got a rather dark transfer cloud hanging over us as well, but we'll get into that shortly. Could be a uh, bit of a big loss, it's fair to say, but we'll go for our results since that game against HK before we do get into that, as you can see on screen. Three good wins domestically, albeit we have started to concede a few goals in our last couple of games against Art Krenius and Phil Kier, but we have got the job done in those games that most recent win was with our backup team as well so I suppose that does somewhat justify that slightly closer scoreline but we are still unbeaten domestically and still have our eight point lead over HK just past the halfway point of the season now so we're in a good position to be securing that Champions League qualifying spot yet again for the next European cycle off the back of this one which we are about to start but as I said we have had a little bit of transfer activity off the back of that game against HK at the start of today's episode that we do need to run through before we have a look at our squad for this upcoming Champions League qualifying campaign. And four players have left the club, and as you can see on screen, two of them are players who you will be familiar with over the last few seasons here. At Volsunga, the first of those is Nathaniel Satole, in the end, him being foreign, just never really helped him here at Volsunga once we added the additions over the past few years of Karel Giroud and also Lasana Dumbia, he fell down the pecking order quite a bit, so we have decided to let him go when AC Milan did come in with a bid for him of £1.4 million. That's not too bad for a player who we did sign back in 2028 for £475,000. Had some really good performances average rating-wise while he was here at the club, but as I said, wasn't getting a lot of game time with that addition of Ogniov, among others. That does mean that he would have again fallen down the pecking order just a little bit more, so Nathaniel Satole has gone to AC Milan for £1.4 million, and there is a 40% of next sale clause included in that contract for us as well. And the other big transfer that we have made, we have got rid of our club captain at the time, Frederick Larson is the new club captain here at Volsinger, but Benjamin Rubio has gone to Arminia Bielefeld. He goes for the slightly cheap price of £1.5 million. We certainly could have got a lot more for him over the past transfer windows, especially on European deadline day. But as we said during yesterday's episode, he had fallen down to being our fourth choice striker here at Volsunga based on his attributes. So it did look like a good time to let go of the club captain who we did pick up on a free transfer back in 2025. Superb goal scoring record for him here at Volsunga. He leaves the club just a little bit shy of being the top goal scorer for the club, which is a little bit of a disappointment, but as I said, he just fell down the pecking order at the wrong time and has gone to Arminia Bielefeld in the Bundesliga for £1.5 million, but yet again, with that 40% of next sale clause included in the contract, and we've also got rid of a young goalkeeper to Nats KR. He was not too happy about that deal either. He pretty much told me to go get stuff when I wished him luck at his new club, and we've also loaned out one of our young players in Iverson as well but that is not the big transfer news from that most recent little period that we have had since that game against HK because we could also be losing a player who's pretty darn important to the way that we play if there was one player that we didn't want to lose this guy is probably the guy and that player is Basaro Gay he has told me that he wants to leave the club unfortunately when you try and talk players into staying at the club he approached in a slightly different way and unfortunately I wasn't able to try and keep him here at the club and he is under bid from some very, very high profile clubs. He wants to leave and then we couldn't try and talk him into staying here at Volsunga. So it unfortunately looks like Basaro Gay is going to be leaving us right prior to the start of this upcoming European qualifying campaign. Just over £10 million bids from Man United, Arsenal, PSG, Inter Milan, Bayern Munich and an even higher one from Leicester City and they all have that 40% of next sale clause included as well which might actually end up being quite profitable for us but the reason we don't like the idea of that transfer is the fact that he really plays as a third centre back for us in that position our next best option in terms of a defensive midfielder here at the club on out and out attributes is bringing our Galtas on and he's not exactly the same player so we might have to use that 10 million pounds 
to try and find a like-for-like -like replacement for Basaro Gay should he decide to leave, which it does look like he probably will be doing, but that's going to leave me scrambling just a little bit going into the start of European qualifying in tomorrow's episode should he decide to leave. And as I said, based on the interaction I have had with him, it does sound like he wants to get the heck out of here at Volsinger, albeit £10 million for this guy. Probably quite a good deal because we did only sign him for £70,000 back in 2029, but he has been great for us in that DM role. That is going to leave a big, big hole to fill leading into this upcoming European campaign. But with that cloud hanging over us, that Oli Gunnar Solskjaer size cloud, unfortunately, we can still do our squad roundup leading into this upcoming European season. And there you can see the players who we have registered for this Champions League coming up. We'll start off with the players who we have actually had to register. First off, the goalkeepers, our first choice one, is going to be Peter Whale Lurvik. He has gone down to three-star current ability and potential in terms of his progress. It's also dropped off quite a bit recently, but in terms of his attributes, they have actually been going up recently, so I'm not too sure what the drop in progress is for. Maybe it's because of the quality of player that we've brought to the club over this most recent transfer window, but he does still look like a very, very good goalkeeping option for us there as our first choice does the Norwegian international, and his backup is going to be Tomas Diaz, the young Uruguayan come Italian, two-star current ability. Three-star potential just holding solid there with the game time that he is getting in our rotation team. And we do also have a third goalkeeper who is available for us should we need him for this upcoming European season because he is a youngster who is under the age of 21, so does not need to be registered. And that is Utley Hlinson. As you can see, not much progress as he is still quite new at the club after coming through one of our youth intakes. But one-star current ability, three-star potential. We've moved him up to the first team, so hopefully... He can develop a little bit more training in and around the senior team. But here's our third choice goalkeeper. Should we absolutely need him, but he does not need to be registered, which is quite nice indeed. We'll go back to that inbox item and start to run through our defenders now. Our starting right back, a new addition to the club, is going to be Lee Van Tam. New addition, so his attributes wouldn't have changed too much from when we did sign him in yesterday's episode, but already valued between 10 to 11 million pounds after we signed him. For around about the £5 million mark. So that's already looking like a good transfer. A little bit of an upgrade there on John Matthews. As we did run through in yesterday's episode. The backup to him is going to be the homegrown club. And nation player and recent Icelandic international call up. And Ian Carlo. Just starting to make a little bit more progression. Than what he was suggesting around this time last year. Which is good but still holding there. At that two and a half star current ability and potential, but it does look like the new training methods that we are using off of one of Zealand's recent videos is helping Ian Carlo resurge at the age of 26 years old. It is fair to say, so those are our top two right-back options, and to go alongside that, Stamatas Chatzakis is a player who can cover both sides at wing-backs. He's a very, very good option for us in this squad as a little bit of depth, as I said, can play on both sides, just holding steady there at that two-star current ability, albeit his potential is now only two and a half star when we first signed him a few seasons ago. He had a lot higher potential than that, but as I said, a really useful squad player just to fill a gap when we absolutely need it thanks to injuries and suspensions and the like. And on the other side at left back, a new starting left back out there as well in Kenny Boreal. He's been making some good progress since joining us back in March. Three and a half star current ability and potential for the man that we did sign from Bordeaux in France. He looks like a really, really good option for us over the next few years. Hopefully, he can lift the little curse that we've had with left backs in their ratings here recently. At Volsunga and the back up to him will be Andy Harwood, another player who can play on both sides of the defense at wing back. Two and a half star current ability, three star potential. Not much progress made since we signed him last year, but does look like he might have improved just a little bit. And we do still have Jorge at the club as well, being 21 years old and homegrown, both in club and nation these days. He does not need to be registered for the Champions League. He's just sort of fluctuating with his current ability and progress at two-star current ability, three-and-a-half-star potential. He's a player who might get a little bit of game time should we suffer injuries, but maybe he's a player who we could also look at loaning out prior to the local deadline day around about the end of this month. So those are our wing back options going back to that inbox item. We can now run through our central defense. The starting center back is going to be Tiago Polo down to three star current ability and potential. So we certainly have some higher rated center backs than that at the club. 
but he continues to be a really, really good performer for us and just seems to be performing a little bit better than most of the centre backs that we do put into that squad, especially in the air. So Thiago Polo, one of our starting centre backs, apparently not too far off a Portuguese call up. He has been called up to the wider squad a few times, but hasn't quite made his way onto the field for a cap yet. And the player who will accompany him for this upcoming season in Europe is going to be Ali Ramadan, the Congolese 23 year old who is really improving here at the club, despite the fact that graph might not suggest that there in terms of the progress, three and a half star current ability, four star potential. He is a really good centre back, probably the best one at the club. And hopefully he can form a good partnership in defence there with Thiago Polo and some very, very strong backups we do have here this season as well in both Gaetano De Plisco, three and a half star current ability and potential as well as Elias Anderson, who started most of the games for us last season. Potentially could be starting ahead of someone like Thiago Polo, but again, three and a half star current ability and potential, an extremely good backup option there. We are very, very deep in terms of our center back and another player who we don't have to register, who's our emergency backup for this upcoming European season is Sudan Dedic, two star current ability, three and a half star potential. He's progressing fairly well. We do have better options actually out on loan at the moment with the likes of Gabriel Zapata, who are at HK. He is a good option because he can also cover that DM role, and that might be quite important should we lose someone like Bussero Gay, like it does look like is going to be the case. So that's what we do look like in defence going into this upcoming European season. Next up, we move into the midfield. We will start off with the defensive midfield, Bussero Gay. Maybe he might be involved in this upcoming European season. Probably not, though, but we'll have a quick look at him just in case progressing really well, which is no doubt why some really big clubs are after him. Boy, I hope he stays, but my hopes are certainly not high considering the clubs that are after him and the fact that he did say that he wanted to join Manchester United, the defending European champions. Of course, Sabasa Roge would be our starting defensive midfielder if he does decide to stay, the backup is going to be Brynjart Galtason, who actually attribute-wise, as I said, despite not looking that great these days, is the best suited to that halfback role that we do use, especially mentally. He's a really good player in terms of those attributes. He's making steady progression, just keeping hold of that two and a half star current ability and potential as that backup defensive midfielder. We are really strong these days in the box-to-box -box midfield. That is because of the addition of Lasana Dumbia, he's progressed really well since joining the club. Still that four-star current ability and five-star potential, but he looks like an absolute star. That is why he was on the next-gen list ranked 35th. On that, he's going to be our starting box-to-box -box midfielder this upcoming European season, hoping for some big things out of him and a very, very capable backup there as well. And Corral Giroud, he's dropped down a little bit with that slightly lesser game time, I would guess, on that three-star current ability and potential but still making some progress as you can see with those arrows there in terms of his attributes and then we go to the Mazala role for this Kalen Rakasan of course is going to be our starting Mazala took me a little while to find him there of course is technically he's listed as a four but he was great for us in that role last season hopefully he can keep that up despite the fact that if you look at his progress graph there he's slightly regressed there but in terms of the arrows yet again Looks like he's going up, and as I said, he was probably our best player in our most recent European campaign, and the backup to him is going to be Paul Stein Anasom with that three-star current ability and potential. He is progressing along nicely and can also cover for us out on that right wing as well, which does make him a very, very good squad player on the bench. And now looking at our front three options first off, despite the fact he's listed there as a defender, it will be Nicholas Zimmerman as our starting right winger. To start things off this European qualifying cycle, as you can see by that progress graph, he did drop off there for a little bit when we did have that break in between the League Cup and the start of the domestic season. But he has improved just a little bit from around about this time last year, has those good arrows as well, moving up nice with that three and a half star current ability. And potential does the French right winger, as I said, we might look to move him on though, if a very, very good bid does come in for him with the addition of Ogniov to our squad here at Volsinger. His backup is not going to be Ogniov because we actually weren't able to register him, so that's interesting in itself. But Patrick Nygaard, being homegrown club and nation, is the backup. He holds a steady progress graph there at two and a half star current ability and potential is actually banging in the goals quite nicely for us in our backup team. 
at the moment. So he is certainly a very, very capable backup for us here at Volsinger. On the right wing for us, out to the left wing. Our starting left winger is going to be the new club captain in Frederick Larson. He's just regressed slightly since this time last year in terms of his progress and that star rating as well. He was about three and a half stars this time last year, I think, these days only at three stars, but still does do a decent job for us. But he's going to get put under quite a bit of pressure this season in Europe, especially by Chaka Traore, where the foreign rules do not take effect quite the same way that they do domestically here for the Icelandic competitions. He's progressed nicely since this time last year and his three and a half star current and potential ability rated is the Ivorian left winger. And as you might be able to tell around about behind my head, he also happens to be in excellent form at the moment. His last few games, an 8.8 .8 rating with five goals and six assists. So they're going to be fighting it out for that starting left wing spot. And the backup for both of those positions for this upcoming season is going to be Bjarki Bjarkason. We still need to keep him around because of the fact he is homegrown in nation, but two-star current ability and potential. The sooner that we can look to move him on, I think it's fair to say the better, but he is a player that we do need to keep around is that emergency backup. For the moment is Bjarki Bjarkason. And then our striking options for this upcoming season Matthias Aguirre, I think we are going to roll with him as our starting striker for the upcoming season just because he has that little bit more potential than Fabio Maliano with that four-star potential does just give him that little edge as well as the fact that he is about 30 centimetres higher. Good promising player, hasn't been at the club for too long but does look like he's improved just a little bit since he did join us in March. Fabio Maliano doesn't actually mean to be registered for these UEFA competitions still because he is 21 years old but homegrown club and nation he has improved greatly since this time last year but is still only 1.56 meters tall that is always going to be something which holds him back a little bit but his form of late another one in great touch in that most recent stretch nine goals and two assists he can definitely be a capable starter for us should we need to call upon him and the third choice striker in behind those guys is going to be Jonada Jonada he is a very very good Young Brazilian come Frenchman, four and a half star potential with that two and a half star current ability is progressing nicely since joining us here at the club and should get a lot more first team football than he did this current season and also can play on the left wing and right wing as well. So a very good squad option there for Joe Nata. So that will round up our squad for this upcoming season for these European games. I think there might be a few more that we didn't actually run through before who did come through our youth intakes, who we could use occasionally should we absolutely need to. One of those is a third choice box-to-box -box midfielder in Valdemar on a player who came for our youth intake a few seasons ago, two-star current ability, three and a half star potential, 18 years old, so we don't need to register him. But he's been doing decently for us when we have called upon him in the early stages of the season, so that's another option in terms of some emergency squad depth. And the other one is, again, a midfield option for us there. And Gardasson, albeit he is more of a winger, one and a half star carability, three star potential, his arrows going up nicely, although maybe he's a player with all that depth that we do have in the wing areas that we might look to loan out. So there's where our squad does look like for this upcoming European season. As I said for now, Ogniov is not registered, even though he's quite a versatile player. We just don't quite have the room to fit him in while fulfilling all those other homegrown club and nation things that we do need to do for these UEFA competitions. But he's a player who will get a fair bit of game time domestically. It is fair to say. And we've also got the likes of Charlie Shaw, who is an English come Irish midfielder with a fair bit of potential who is progressing nicely. He's a player who hasn't quite made the squad. Might be a player we look to loan out. The same as the case for Brahima Makalau. It would be really nice if he developed into something like Basaroge, but looking at him early days, doesn't look like that's quite going to be the case, but another loan spell for him, and he might continue to develop into a player who we can use in the first team in a season or so's time, and we have also not registered Thomas Tishi, the player who we did sign on a free transfer from that next gen list, hasn't been at the club for long, but could probably use a loan spell out to get some quality football under his belt to make sure that he does fulfill that very high potential that he does have. So that's pretty much a roundup, I think, of our squad here at Volsunga leading into this upcoming European season. As I said before, though, with that massive cloud hanging over us, with that potential sale there of Basaro Gay, we will see what happens there. We might have to try and come up with something and try and pick out a like-for-like -like replacement for him. 
if we can, albeit it's probably going to be hard to find someone of the same quality because he is an absolute beast for us in that DM roll. But that will do it for today's episode. A win there earlier against HK to make sure we are going to be top of the table going into these European qualifiers and having a look at our squad going in to the European season, which will start in tomorrow's episode. If you did enjoy today, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. We will come back tomorrow, as I said, for the second qualifying round of the Champions League. And our opposition is going to be by Tar Jerusalem, as we suspected they wiped the four pretty comfortably with their Kosovo opposition in that first qualifying round, albeit that is still a team we should be getting past. And if we win that one, we do guarantee ourselves at least group stage football in one of the UEFA competitions. But the board expects us these days to reach the group stages of the Champions League. And I expect that as well. So hopefully that is what we are going to do over the next few episodes. So tomorrow we'll come back, pretty much get stuck straight into those games and also check in on how HK and the two Nuts teams are getting on in their Conference League qualifiers. And also, I suppose, see if Basaro Gay has ditched us as we do expect them to. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.